The origins of the people that would come to inhabit Phoenicia remains mostly unknown, though many believe they migrated with the Gasolean culture to the Levant, from which they mixed and eventually formed what we consider the Phoenician culture. Throughout much of the Bronze Age, the region remained dominated by city-states, with Northern Levant periodically being occupied by foreign invaders from both Mesopotamia and Anatolia. But the Phoenician city-states remained largely independent and free of any foreign rule. By the Late Bronze Age, the cities had developed became an important part of the trade route which ran through the Levant. In the early 16th century BC, Egypt ejected foreign rulers known as the Hyksos and re-established native dynastic rule under the New Kingdom. This led to Egypt's incursion into the Levant, with a particular focus on Phoenicia. The first known account of the Phoenicians relates to the conquest of Tutmos III. Coastal cities such as Byblos, Arwad, and Ulasa were targeted for their crucial geographic and commercial links with the interior. By the mid-14th century, most of Phoenicia, along with parts of the Levant, came under a loose Egyptian administrative framework. The Phoenician city-states were considered favored cities to the Egyptians, helping anchor Egypt's access to resources and trade. Tyre, Sidon, Beirut, and Byblos were regarded as the most important. Though nominally under Egyptian rule, the Phoenicians had considerable autonomy and their cities were fairly well developed and prosperous. Though from 1350 to 1300 BC, Egypt lost control over its holdings in northern Phoenicia due to an invasion by the Amorites and Hittites. The southern Phoenician cities, however, remained autonomous. And under Seti I, Egypt reaffirmed its control over the region. Though Egypt's rule would be short lived, as sometime between 1200 and 1150 BC, the Late Bronze Age collapsed, severely weakened, or destroyed most of the civilizations in the region, including the Egyptians and the Hittites. The Phoenicians, now free from foreign domination and interference, weathered the crisis relatively well emerging as a distinct and organized civilization in 1230 BC. For the next several centuries, Phoenicia was prosperous, and the period is sometimes described as a Phoenician Renaissance. They filled the power vacuum caused by the Late Bronze Age collapse by becoming the sole mercantile and maritime power in the region. The Phoenicians established ports, warehouses, markets, and settlements all across the Mediterranean and up to the Black Sea. The first textual account of the Phoenicians during the Iron Age comes from the Assyrian king Tiglath-Pilser I, who recorded his campaign against the Phoenicians between 1114 and 1076 BC. He describes exacting tribute from Byblos and Sidon, but Assyrian control was relatively short. As the Iron Age saw the height of Phoenician shipping, mercantile, and cultural activity, among their most popular goods were fine textiles, typically dyed with the famed Tyranian purple. Phoenicians also became the leading producers of glass in the region, their glassware being shipped across the Mediterranean. Colonies in Spain appear to have utilized the potter's wheel, while Carthage, now an independent city-state, utilized cereal production produced large numbers of ships quickly and cheaply. The Phoenicians also created what would become the basis for most Western alphabets. The Phoenicians stood out from their contemporaries in that their rise was relatively peaceful. They went not for conquest as the Babylonians and Assyrians did, but for trade. Even the Israelites to their south, who were in conflict with virtually every neighboring country, regarded the Phoenicians as respected neighbors, with whom Israel was able to maintain good diplomatic and commercial relations. During the rule of priest Ithabal, Tyre expanded its territory as far north as Beirut, near the parts of Cyprus. This unusual act of aggression was the closest the Phoenicians ever came to forming a unitary state, but his kingdom would be short-lived. 
As a mercantile power concentrated along a narrow strip of land, the Phoenicians lacked a size and population to support a large military. Thus, as neighboring empires began to rise, the Phoenicians increasingly fell under the sway of foreign rulers. The Assyrian conquest of Phoenicia began with King Shalmaneser III, who rose to power in 858 BC and began a series of campaigns against neighboring states. The Phoenician city-states fell under his rule over a period of three years, were forced to pay heavy tribute in money, goods, and natural resources. However, the Phoenicians were not annexed outright and remained in a state of vassalage. After the death of Shaman Seir III in 824 BC, the Phoenicians maintained their quasi-independence as subsequent rulers did not wish to meddle in their internal affairs, lest they deprive their empire of a key source of capital. This changed in 744 BC, the ascension of Tiglath Pilser III, who sought to forcibly incorporate the surrounding territories. By 738 BC, most of the Levant, including northern Phoenicia, were annexed and fell directly under Assyrian administration, with only Tyre and Byblos remaining in vassalage. Over the next century, the Phoenicians would rebel several times, although they would fail each time and were violently repressed. However, by the end of the 7th century BC, the Assyrians had been weakened by successive revolts throughout their empire, which led to a congruent invasion from the Babylonians and Medians, which ultimately led to their destruction. The Babylonians, formerly vassals of the Assyrians, took advantage of the empire's collapse and quickly established the Neo-Babylonian Empire in its place. While Babylonian rule over Phoenicia was brief, it hastened the decline that began under the Assyrians. Phoenician cities revolted several times throughout the reigns of the Babylonian kings. Nebuchadnezzar would besiege the rebellious Tyre, which resisted for 13 years. The conquests of the late Iron Age left the Phoenicians politically and economically weakened the city-states gradually losing their influence and autonomy in the face of growing foreign powers. Nevertheless, during most of the three centuries of vassalage and domination, the Phoenicians generally managed to remain relatively independent and prosperous. Even when conquered, many of the city-states continued to flourish, leveraging their role as intermediaries, shipbuilders, and traders. In 539 BC, Cyrus the Great king of the Persian Achaemenid Empire had exploited the unraveling of the Neo-Babylonian Empire and took the capital of Babylon. As Cyrus began consolidating territories across the Near East, the Phoenicians peacefully yielded themselves to the Persians. Most of the Levant was consolidated by Cyrus into a single satrap and forced to pay a small yearly tribute. Local Phoenician kings were allowed to remain in power and were even given the same rights as Persian governors. Nevertheless, during the Persian era, many Phoenicians left to settle elsewhere in the Mediterranean, particularly further west. Carthage was a popular destination, so by this point it was an established and prosperous empire, which had taken over control of the former Phoenician colonies. The Phoenicians remained a core asset to the Achaemenid Empire, particularly for their prowess in shipbuilding, navigation, and maritime technology, willingly furnishing the bulk of the Persian fleet during the Greco-Persian Wars of the late 5th century BC. In 333 BC, Phoenicia became one of the first places conquered by Alexander the Great during his military campaigns across Western Asia. Alexander's main target in the Persian Levant was Tyre, now the region's largest and most important city, it capitulated after a roughly seven-month siege. The rest of Phoenicia easily came under his control, with Saddam, the second most powerful city, surrendering peacefully. However, Alexander's empire collapsed soon after his death in 323 BC, dissolving into several rival kingdoms ruled by his generals, relatives, or friends. The Phoenicians came under the control of the Seleucids. The Phoenician homeland was repeatedly contested by the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt during the Forty-Year Syrian Wars, though it mostly remained under the rule of the Seleucids. 
but by 63 BC, the Seleucid Empire, which had once stretched from the Aegean Sea to Pakistan, was reduced to a rump state, eventually being annexed to the Roman Republic by Pompeii. After centuries of decline, the last vestiges of Phoenician power in the eastern Mediterranean were absorbed into the Roman province of Coli Syria.